My name is Dennis Nickel. I grew up in the Afton area and attended St. George School and Church, as did my wife, Lucia Roseman. Her father, Martin, her mother, Ione, and her brother, Gilbert, were very active in the church, as was my grandmother, Esther Brewer. I only mention this because you might wonder why I highlight their names and faces in this video. The story of the St. George Parish and School starts in the Gardenville community of Afton, Missouri, around the year 1915. Most of the photos and memories depicted in this video span from 1915 to 1965, the year St. George celebrated its 50th anniversary. The first parish priest was Father John Walterman, appointed in July 1915 by Archbishop Glennon, later to become Cardinal Glennon. Father John Byrne, who served from 1949 to 1959, performed the marriage ceremony at my mother and father's wedding. I'll pause again here and allow you to just view the video and listen to the music. Without funds, and with no knowledge of the area or its people, Father Walterman set out, walking the neighborhood, collar intact, addressing everyone who greeted him or tipped his hat, judging them to be Catholic. He came upon Genoine's grocery store and was met with a genuine welcome. With Mrs. Genoine's help in informing others, the St. George Parish had its beginning. Arrangements for Holy Mass started at Severn's Dance Hall. There would be a dance the Saturday night before, but by Sunday morning, a temporary altar was erected, vestments obtained from St. Elizabeth's Academy, and Holy Mass was celebrated. How did the parish get its name? When Senior George Draher was among a group gathered at the rectory of St. Francis de Sales along with Father Walterman, who had been thinking of several possible names. When Senior Draher offered, why not call it St. George? To which the pastor, Father Walterman, replied, By George, I will. Father Walterman's next concern was to provide a school. Though he had no home, nor a school building, he came to St. Elizabeth's Academy to apply for sisters. Sisters Matilda and a lay teacher, Miss Helen Rust, were the first to be appointed teachers at St. George, expecting no more than 90 students. However, on the Friday before Labor Day 1915, 140 children were registered to attend the new school. Father Walterman went back to St. Elizabeth's Academy and begged for more help. Sister Angelica, a retired teacher, was put back into commission and joined the faculty of St. George. On the next day, Saturday, and Labor Day, the men of the parish erected a two-room portable building. This with rented space and what had been a bakery, formed the first St. George School. Within a month, enrollment increased, another room was opened, and Sister Imelda was added to the St. George faculty. In 1965, at the time of St. George's Golden Jubilee celebration, Sister Imelda was still among the nuns of St. George and is pictured in this video along with other 1965 faculty members. Sister Matilda would go on to teach at St. George and elsewhere for 53 years before she died on May 29, 1959. During his one year at St. George, Father Walterman rented a house at what was 8203 Gravoy Road. He succeeded with the help of the men of the parish in erecting a framed church facing Siebert near the intersection of Gravoy Road. Some of the local people pronounce it Seibert, but the German pronunciation is Sievert. The sisters would walk uphill from the end of the car line to Cherokee Loop in the mud and snow to teach each weekday of the school year. In 1916, three rooms were furnished as a sisters' convent above the original Gravoy Bank at the northeast corner of Gravoy and Sievert. When school opened in 1916, classes were held in three locations. The frame building at 8120 Gravoy, the former bakery next to the bank, and what had been a saloon, and then later Weiss's drugstore. 
Those of you who grew up in the area might remember Weiss's drugstore. There were five classrooms taught by sisters Matilda, Imelda, Leoba, Dulcithia, and Miss Russ. That same year in the fall of 1916, a young Father Joseph Siebert was appointed administrator of St. George. He would later become pastor on November 14, 1929. He moved into the rectory at 8203 Gravoy and a new era opened for the St. George Parish. A two-acre property near Gravoy and Hege Avenue that included a four-room cottage was purchased for the parish March 1, 1917 for $4,000. Providing for the children's education was a prime concern for the parish. In 1921, the Severn Picnic Grounds and Dance Hall were purchased and the house became a convent for the sisters. The sisters had to cross a lake to get to the school. Some much older parishioners may remember the lake and the bridge near the area that I and my classmates once considered the St. George School Playground. During the Depression years of the early 1930s, with the help of WPA labor, the lake was filled, the bridge raised, and the schoolyard leveled. In 1928, the parish erected an auditorium on Higgy Road across the street from the current church building. The auditorium included a bowling alley in the basement and an area upstairs that could be used as a basketball court. At one time, the Bayless School basketball team practiced there. School and community plays were held in the auditorium, and as a member of the St. George Church Choir, I can remember practicing in the old auditorium. The building was raised and completely demolished by May of 2012 and is currently a parking lot for the church. Father Siebert was largely responsible for building the existing church at Hege and Gravoy. While studying for the priesthood, he attended the University of Louvain. During the summer, he traveled through Italy and admired the architecture of the Lombard churches. He had a vision of building such a church. This vision would be realized on April 15, 1928, only 15 months after laying the cornerstone in 1927. Total cost? $203,158.17. Recovering from surgery at St. Anthony's Hospital, Father Siebert died on the afternoon of July 31, 1943. Incidentally, this was the same St. Anthony's Hospital where I and my wife were born. At the time, 3520 Chippewa Avenue near Grand Avenue. I'll pause again here and allow you to just view the video and listen to the music. In the early 1950s, the church was out of debt and ready to start a new undertaking, a new school building and convent to provide safe and adequate quarters for the sisters who were, at the time, crowded in the non-fireproof building at 4980 Siebert Road. Plans were drawn up and the site was blessed and ground broken by Bishop Cody on February 1953, less than two months before I was born. Plenty of time to get things completed for I and my classmates to start kindergarten in 1958. There's a bonus portion of this video somewhere that shows a 1958 photo of the kindergarten classroom that was considered a jewel of the new school building. At the time the school and convent were being built, a little boy, John Kova, had convinced his mother, the sister, 
told the kindergarten class to be on hand to help dig the first hole for the new school. Believing he would participate in the excavation, little John Kova brought a shovel. As it turned out, it was the only shovel there. He is pictured in this video with Bishop Cody, who is using John's little shovel to break ground on the new school and convent. I'll pause again here and allow you to just view the video and listen to the music. Among my fondest memories of St. George, I especially enjoyed being a member of the St. George Choir. I loved to harmonize. I was in choir when Mr. Fury directed the group. However, for the majority of the time, Miss Barbara Boges was the choir director, and a very good one at that. Outside of school hours, Barbara Boges was my piano and voice teacher. She tried and I don't blame her for my lack of talent. It's all on me, and we're still good friends. I should mention that St. George closed the school in 2003. Students at the time either went to St. Dominic's or Seven Holy Founders. Eventually, the church would combine with St. Dominic's and on May 20th, 2018, St. Dominic's and St. George merged to become St. John Paul II.
Some of my fondest memories of St. George had little to do with Latin classes or having fun with the nuns, getting to see the inside of the principal's office frequently, or the lunch meat sandwiches I carried in my rifleman lunchbox. Even more so than playing softball on an asphalt parking lot, I enjoyed the people, the kids that attended class with me and the fun we had together in school and outside of school hours. I'm happy to say that many of them are still good friends yet today. Although I don't live in the neighborhood anymore, I do get over there from time to time, and each time I drive by the church or school building, I reminisce and think of good times, great school picnics, midnight masses at Christmas and Easter, and the music programs in which I was blessed to participate. I've been to many weddings there, including my own. I've attended many funerals at St. George Church, including several family members. St. George has been a significant part of my life, and for that I'm grateful. I hope those of you who may have attended St. George School, or were members of the parish at one time, find something in this video that makes you look back and smile. Thanks for watching.